TEDxQUT would like to acknowledge the Turrbal and Yuggera people as the traditional custodians of the lands we gather on today. We would like to pay respects to all Elders past, present and emerging, as well as all First Nations people in our QUT family. We recognise the continued connection Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have with country and acknowledge that this land has always been a place of learning. Hi there, my name is Rachel Burr. My name is Leon Allen Farwood. I'm Jayanthi Mendy. I'm Jennifer Haig. My name is Brett Lewis. My name is Jonathan Sri Ranganathan. My name is Viet Tran. G'day, my name is Dr. Bernie Warren. I'm Glenda Caldwell. My name is Dr. Alina Dini. I'm Joshua B. Phillips. Hi, I'm Emily Muir. I'm Karen Ganano. Hi, my name is Andrea Davey. Hi, I'm Huey Brown. My name's Leanne Butterworth. My name is Rob Perrin. So I'm Owen Cafe, I'm a Wadjuk Pin Drop Man. Hi, my name is Freya Rybroff. My name is Michael Milford. I'm Jane Milburn. So I'm Dr. Michael Cowley. My name's Carly Davies. My name is Claudia Steiner. Hi, my name is Montana White. I am the current co-director of TEDxQUT. 2023 marks 10 years since the conception of TEDxQUT. TEDxQT has transformed thousands of lives across the QUT campus and across the globe. Hosting more than 16 unique events during this time, TEDxQT has provided a platform for more than 1,600 community members to share ideas and engage in transformative conversations. My TED talk was about systemic racism and it was trying to unpack this idea that although we often focus a lot on overt individual examples of racism, like someone saying something abusive on the bus. Really what we need to focus on is the way that systems and processes and organisations are inherently racist in terms of how they're structured and how they use power. So it was a, a bit of a deep dive into uh, history of Australian racism and looking at how different racist policies throughout history have shaped where we are today. So my talk in 2022 was called Healthy Empathy Can Save Lives, including yours. It was really trying to get out the word of the importance of empathy and what healthy empathy is and what it looks like and why often it's not the thing that we think it is because it's such an over-encompassing word that we all use. So I was really trying to clarify it and get people to embrace it. Well, my talk was about slow clothing as a, a way of wearing, caring and choosing clothes so they bring value, meaning and joy to every day. And when we love our things, we tend to hold on to them more and not do the buying and tossing, which is sort of part of our everyday practice. Gosh, I have had some notable milestones. One big one was that I was able to leave my day job and go out on my own to become a full-time practicing designer and artist. And that's something that I'm still doing. Um, other milestones would be, I mean, dressing Harry Styles. That's been a big one. So the milestones since I did my TEDx talk, well, I completed my master's. I have been able to go on to complete a PhD and I am now a postdoctorate researcher. Uh, which I'm quite proud of. Uh, I've filmed for the BBC. Uh, our media has uh, been seen by 250 new me news media outlets globally. We have 15 million views online. I've worked with famous YouTube channels like Zafrank. Also featured in 32 museums around the world and over 12 documentary series have featured our media. Well, my biggest achievement this year is writing, writing the book, Time to Write Persuasively. And it's based on all of the work that I've been doing with academics, not just academic researchers, but commercial research. A lot of work in the corporate sector where 
They need to be able to write great documents so that people take notice of what they're doing. The TEDx talk was nothing like what I'd done in academia before. Um, the idea of talking without a script or without relying on a slide deck for 10 or 15 minutes um, initially sounded pretty easy to me, but in practice was incredibly uh, difficult. And the actual topic that I started to talk about, which was robotics, wasn't actually the topic that I ended up uh, speaking for my TEDx talk. So I worked with Karen, who was my coach, uh, and we realized that my real passion at the time that I wanted to talk about was this whole idea of combining education and entertainment together. I got into the, the state of flow at the right time and it just kind of came out. And then when I stepped off stage was when it hit, like what I had done. There's a photo of me literally stepping off stage where you can see me go, Oh, like, oh, that just happened. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, I was a bundle of nerves. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be completely honest, I was a bundle of nerves when it came to delivering my uh, TEDx talk back in 2015, but um, I was just so honoured to have been invited to participate. It's an amazing opportunity and that feeling when I'd finished my talk and I uh, was walking off the stage, it was just exhilarating. So I'd, I'd jump at the opportunity again in a heartbeat. Uh, people's voices, their authentic voice and their authentic thoughts and feelings and values are actually being washed out by so many commercialised entities and so on. And so to have TEDx as a platform broadly I think those sort of avenues of, of connection and, and, and sharing become critical to actually how we evolve as a community. I think it's such a great platform and there's so many people who really enjoy watching TED Talks and TEDx Talks. I think it's um, a great platform for people to get educated on so many different subjects. I think that it is among the best ways to get uh, the big ideas put into a concise package and put it into a form that everybody can, can digest. Uh, and that is, uh, it's, it's hard, it's not easily, it's not done well often, uh, but when it, when it does work, it's just, it's magic and everybody in the room knows it. I was actually a little bit demanding of my audience as I asked them to invent their own word and allow me to use it while writing a story live during the event. I really love the words that people make up just for use with their family and friends and I think it's so sweet and so funny. So I hope my impact was that people got something out of seeing other people's words and their meanings. Uh, what's really nice with TEDxQUT is that it does focus on people who are related to QUT in some way. And I think that that's a really beautiful opportunity for our students, our staff, alumni to have their voices heard in a way that is universally recognised, but that's really um, accepting and, and rewarding for them as well. We're really proud to have um, been awarded the Vice-Chancellor's uh, Award for Excellence for Inclusion and Diversity in 2022 with the introduction of our uh, TEDx Salon series and the focus on our uh, community. Salons were a chance for us to sort of reinvigorate the TEDxQT program and provide more accessible opportunities for TEDx to work with the QUT community. It's going to sound very corny, very cheesy, but I think I think anyone who's anyone who's watching this, if you are, if you have anything on your mind in regards to what you want to do, what you want to achieve, um, you're only one step, one decision away from making it happen. So I think the only way is to start and to start now. We sincerely thank each and every person who has made the last 10 years possible.